All right, so today we're gonna go over the uh, eight functions of the cardiovascular system. And this is mainly really gonna pertain to uh, exercise fits. So pretty much uh, we're gonna look at it, not necessarily in just like the anatomical sense, but really in terms of uh, these different functions that the cardiovascular system has, as well as uh, how they pertain to your cardiovascular system and things like aerobic exercise and just exercise in general. So let's take a look at the first function of the cardiovascular system, and this is to transport oxygenated blood. So in terms of exercise physiology, we're really looking at the transport of oxygenated blood to active skeletal muscle. This is important because, for example, if you're eating a sandwich and you're not necessarily doing any physical activity, you want more oxygenated blood to be sent towards your visceral organs so that you can actually digest the food. Meanwhile, when you're running, you want more of the oxygenated blood to be transported to your skeletal muscles and away from your visceral organs. So it is really important to understand this concept of transportation of oxygenated blood to active skeletal muscle. Okay, so the second function of this cardiovascular system is the transport of metabolic substrates. Like, as we just discussed, the oxygen is being transported to the different cells. However, these cells are using that oxygen to break down metabolic substrates and produce energy. So what are the three different substrates that are predominantly used? Um, you'll probably recognize these uh, for energy production in general, and that's glucose, free fatty acids, and amino acids. So the third function of the cardiovascular system is going to be the removal of metabolic end products, such as lactic acid, CO2, ammonia, and urea. Essentially, uh, as we previously discussed, O2 has reached the cells as well as metabolic substrates, and the breakdown of those metabolic substrates is producing these metabolic end products. And we need to get rid of them and get them out of the body in order to continue exercising. So the fourth function of the cardiovascular system is the regulation of pH, essentially controlling for alkalosis and acidosis. As we exercise, the body becomes more acidic, meaning that there are a greater number of hydrogen ions. Essentially, the cardiovascular system is able to uh, buffer this, and that is why it is important in terms of pH regulation. So the fifth function of the cardiovascular system is the transport of hormones to cells. Um, some of the specific hormones are norepinephrine and epinephrine, as well as thyroxin and insulin. Um, these hormones specifically get released in greater proportion after about 50% VO2 max, and this is due to them allowing the body to conduct higher work outputs. The last three functions include the maintenance of fluid volume, absorption and redistribution of heat, and immune system functions. Maintenance of fluid volume means that the body wants a specific osmolarity in terms of proportion of water to solutes, while the absorption and redistribution of heat includes sending blood to the skin to dissipate heat that is created by the metabolism and creation of energy. While the immune system doesn't play a direct role in exercise physiology, it does allow you to stay healthy and does help with the inflammation process. So in summary, we have the transport of oxygenated blood, delivery of metabolic substrates, removal of metabolic end products, regulation of pH, the transport of hormones, maintenance of fluid volume, absorption and redistribution of heat, and immune system function. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe, and please stay tuned for the next one.